Enjoy 12 days of chess heaven at the Chessable Sunway Sieges International Chess Festival. Escape to the sun this December and take part in the spectacular Chessable Sunway Chess Festival situated in Sieges, near Barcelona. Play alongside top GMs including Ivanchuk, Isipenko, Ariban and more. 10 round open tournaments with over 27,000 euros in prizes. Chess lectures from GMs most days, beer tasting plus sushi, pizza, paella and cocktail masterclasses. World Cup watch parties, table tennis, table football and blitz chess tournaments. Even better, Chessable Pro members play for free. You can find out more by going to Sunway Siege's website. Visit chessable.com slash sunway. Welcome to the new Chess24 playing experience. Play in light mode or dark mode. Choose from a range of time controls or create a custom game and get paired with players from around the world fast. Enjoy a polished playing experience while making moves on a fresh, responsive board to claim your victories. Train and improve with over 80,000 puzzles. And that's not all. Download now and discover what more you can enjoy in our brand new app. Okay, uh, hello everybody and uh, welcome to this uh, banter bit session. So I will just uh, rather randomly accept challenges. I will try to uh, alternate between uh, different uh, levels of opponents. So just let's get going. I will start with uh, Batman 2017. And as for time control, well, as usual, the, the faster it is, the, the more games we reach. So uh, like 3 plus 2 is fine. 3 plus 0 is also good. 5 minutes is already, I think, a little bit uh, too much. So let's see. Mm. If my opponent is there. Oh, he doesn't actually have a green. Uh, uh, I forgot that. It makes more sense if I accept challenges from people with uh, with this green. Uh, I mean that they are currently online. So let's try another one. The Nims Larsener. So he will play b3 most probably if he is there. Mm. Is he there? From Georgia. Let's see. He does play b3. So as expected. Now, I am hoping to be able to uh, to be allowed to play a gambit that I really enjoy, actually. Uh, and this gambit, of course, if white plays bishop to b5. Now, normal move is bishop d6. It's very solid. But I will try this move knight g7. Uh, so the idea is to protect the, the knight on c6 to be able to recapture. But white can win a pawn with bishop takes the a5, which he does. Now the point is that I will win the bishop pair. And actually, there is quite a lot of uh, dynamical play for black in this position. So I'm not sure if it's fully compensating for the uh, for the pawn. I mean, a pawn is, after all, quite a lot, especially a central pawn. But uh, I played it quite a lot, especially in blitz, or exclusively in blitz. It's pretty interesting, I have to say. But uh, someone has to... <laughs> has to check it with an engine probably if we if we are to know whether it's also working objectively. Okay, let's push. So what I'm trying to do in general is I'm trying to uh, make it less appealing for white to castle short. So with my pawn on h4, I think short castle. Uh, at least I hope that it it's becoming a bit uh, a bit too risky for white. So he wants knight bd2, then probably something slow like queen e2. 
and maybe long castle. But okay, I will just develop and we will see what happens. Pawn on g7 is not so dangerous because rook g8 and I will pick up the g2 pawn. Mm, so let's see. Long castle. Okay, he can go b4 and attack me, but uh, it does not really scare me a lot because with the bishop pair, rarely, you can really get mated. Mm. And I'm seeing in the chat Jup, whom I played many times in my previous banter blitzes. Good evening, Jup, and good evening to the rest of you as well. Uh, I I will try to keep uh, keep an eye on both the Twitch chat and and the uh, Chess Twenty Four chat. But as time gets slower, we will see how well I <laughs> I manage. It's not always going uh, going that smooth. So now I'm considering to play d4. He will take. Knight takes, bishop takes, and then the move bishop to g3. Very messy tactical uh, idea, but probably bishop c5 uh, makes it not that appealing. So I'm going for the boring approach instead. Can I play? No, bishop g3 immediately is too much. This white will simply take. Uh -huh. Let's okay, play g5. Uh -huh. Now I'm tempted to play the move a5 to try to play against his queen side. Still, this move d4 is interesting, actually. Just as on the previous, should I play? But he will go e4 after d4. That's not very nice. Okay, so a5 is my idea on the next move. Let's see. Also, without the increment, of course, I should uh, try to be a bit faster. Mm hmm. King b1, very solid, very healthy move. I will execute my ID. b5, now knight a7, now both pawns are hanging, but of course white can defend them like this. But my idea is to play something like c6 later on and open up. It does feel like white is playing very well, and my compensation kind of gets less and less by every move. Uh, let's try. I will give this pawn actually because if he takes, I have knight b6 and the pawn on a4 is hanging. But, uh, I'm not uh, trusting myself very much in this. Okay, now I have a trick. If he takes with the queen, the queen is trapped. So maybe I will win by tricks because I'm certainly not winning by <laughs> by position. <sighs> let's see. He takes with the knight, a much better move, of course. Okay, I'm threatening bishop before. Mm. Okay, now it's beginning. I think white should have done something a little bit differently because, or am I just getting mated now? If I'm getting mated, I have to take back everything I said. But I don't see the mate because bishop c8, knight comes to b6, bishop is covering b7. It's of course very dangerous, but ah, there is mate on a7. Ah, there is mate on a7. Oops. Ah. Oops. Mm, am I just mated? I cannot even move the bishop because queen a7. Ay, ay, ay. Ah, I should have played bishop before. Shit. Oof. Okay. What to do? Sometimes I get mated. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Nims Larsner. Excellent. Uh, excellent quality of play. Well done. Let's try a game with Jup. Mm. Black again, let's play uh, the Sicilian. Why the a4, b5 structure was good for black? Well, I mean, I provoked white's pawns forward in order to uh, uh, later on be able to attack them with my knight. And I did actually win uh, win white's pawn, so it kind of worked. But suddenly, out of nowhere, uh, the mating attack became very strong. So let's try to avoid getting mated in the future. Hmm. G four. 
So this is kind of a childhood favorite of mine, this uh, Scheveningen Sicilian. I always thought this flexible pawn structure is quite nice for black to uh, uh, to play. But unfortunately, it seems like the stronger the engines are getting, the less they like this uh, this opening line for black. So that's a little bit sad, but I think especially in Blitz, it works very well still. Uh, although in in classical nowadays, I would actually think uh, think twice about playing it. So he would want he wants to play g five. Then I play h five, I guess, to keep it blocked. Maybe bishop e seven was a bit lazy. Maybe d five immediately was a bit better. Very hard to say. Mm. Flintsbacher is saying, nice game in the Bundesliga against Schroeder. Yeah, thank you very much. I actually won a, a classical game of chess uh, last weekend, so it feels great. It does not happen too often nowadays. Uh, and the game in itself, it wasn't great, but it also wasn't, uh, wasn't that bad. Mm. I think it's actually possible to, uh, to find the game annotated by me on, my, uh, on the webpage of my club, so the Hamburger Schach Club. Sure, someone can uh, can Google it to find my comments. Mm, let's see. Okay, so we'll try to put a bit of pressure on this pawn, but White has to move Queen D four. Uh, attacking G seven, but also importantly, defending the pawn on E four. So I'm calculating something like ah, okay, he doesn't do it, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, Mm -hmm. But this one, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not so scared of this one because I will be able to to trade some pieces. Is he intending f5 next? Or knight? now maybe knight d5 is the point. And I will get, uh, <laughs> get mated once more. So g6, he's actually threatening knight d5. Is he? Okay, let's see. Play rook d8. If knight d5, at least white is also pinned. So it could be... Uh, that I'm holding there. Because knight e5 I take with the e-pawn and I play uh, queen c7 next. White can't take my bishop because of the pin. So, but I have to be very careful. I mean, he does play knight d5. Also, I don't need to take it because there is also uh, a pin immediately. But let's, okay, I said I would, so let's try. Ah, rook takes e7, I can take with the king. d6 maybe is a problem. No, d6, I... I thought I could... Hang on, what is this? I'm getting very confused. So I take... If he takes with the queen, I take. He takes, but then the bishop on f3 is hanging. Although maybe in, even if I win this bishop, I might be doing very badly. Because the two rooks are very strong. Uh, let me think. Uh, he can also take on c6, but then... Okay, let's go. He goes for this. Rook takes a6 would be played. And I do have some back rank issues. Hmm. I can't castle because my bishop is hanging. I can play king f8, but that's really very slow. Uh, let me try king d8 instead. My bishop is covering a8, which is very important. This, but now I have rook e8, I thought. So my idea is to go here next. And once I get out of this sort of bind, uh, my two bishops are much stronger than the rook. But first I have to get out. And I'm not entirely sure. Uh, king d2. Okay, let's play it simple. I will just trade. And now, eventually I should be able to win. Let's see. Bishop c5 is a big threat.
let's go to G. Ah, no, now I allow this. What is this? What happened? Yeah, now it should be should be winning. Yeah, timeout, but also the position looks winning. Uh, okay, not not very clean in the end, but thank you for the game, Jup. Uh, let's see. I'm sure that at some point there in the middle game, it was uh, it was looking very uh, looking very dodgy for me. Let's see. Okay, let's try to play play against the Greek player against the Cispal. Mm -hmm. D four. Hmm. I'm a bit big. <laughs> ah, knight c3. I was about to say I'm not sure whether I should play uh, the Slav defense, which I played in the weekend because I had a terribly boring draw in the exchange Slav last Sunday. So, but now knight c3, and we are don't have to worry about such things. Uh, Any chess plans for 2023? Oh, it's very early to talk about that. Uh, my next tournament is actually uh, this uh, European Championship in uh, in Rapid and Blitz. In uh, Katowice, Poland, that starts in, in around two weeks. So this is a bit of a warm-up. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping I will be a bit more efficient there than uh, than what I have currently been today. Mm, knight e2. I'm a little bit. I think white is supposed to play c3 first because really the the pawn is better than the knight on c3. And that is at least my uh, my understanding. Now I will play bishop b4, and probably white will have to give up uh, their bishop on b5. Uh, and the bishop pair was uh, white's main advantage in the position. So here I believe I'm. I'm doing quite all right. Mm. Also, and the risk of me getting somehow mated suddenly is much lower when I uh, when I manage to trade a few pieces. So so far, I'm quite happy. <laughs> yeah, uh, B okay. B four is good because otherwise I would play C five. That is positionally well founded. I'm going back at some point. I'm uh, I want to play E five. I guess. Mm, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Kornat is saying that he saw me on Swedish TV with Anna Kramling. Yeah, that is uh, that is correct. I was uh, on Swedish TV last last year with uh, with quite a nice uh, TV ID where basically I was playing against uh, the Swedish people, so they were voting for their moves uh, on the broadcast. And I, uh, I was sitting in the studio, and uh, made my own moves there. And uh, Kamling was commenting on on the match together with the, uh, uh, with the host. So that was a pretty nice idea. Uh, I'm not sure whether it will uh, will happen again or if it was a one off. But we actually won uh, won a prize. Uh, I'm not sure how many people know about this prize, but uh, we won a prize for. Uh, what was it? Most the best interactive uh, uh, or online interactive TV program in uh, in last year, in I think the whole of Europe. So concept was a success. I hope they will do it again, but we will see. Mm. Mm -hmm. will also play in Katowice. Yeah, I mean this uh, this is actually like because of the World Championship. In Rapid and Blitz, for those of you who maybe are not too familiar with it, it's a super strong event with all the best players. And this year, for instance, it's in Kazakhstan. Maybe for some people, not the most exciting place to, to travel to. Uh, but the, the European Championship is completely different because that is more of a sort of people's festival. Usually, like six, five, six hundred players at least from all levels 
uh, many many amateurs uh, and also some professionals like uh, like myself i will go there uh, and some of my colleagues but in general it's more uh, more of a mixed field so it's a completely different uh, atmosphere different tournament so i'm looking forward to it i will go there actually with my girlfriend who will also play uh should be nice i'm looking forward to it Let's see, yeah. Well, white has this sort of protected post pawn on a5, but I don't think it's actually going anywhere, uh, which should mean that I'm doing well here. Because as soon as the pawn goes forward, uh, it will get attacked. Mm. But on the other hand, this knight on d3 is very strong. Uh, and as long as I can't really remove it, then I will not be able to put pressure on the pawn on uh, on b4. And now white starts to move it voluntarily, which I'm a little bit skeptical about. So this is the main uh, the main piece that holds everything together for white. Mm, queen e1, but now this pawn looks like it's hanging. Yeah, I think the really the the tipping point is when the knight moved from uh, from d3, because then the white seemed to lose a lot of grip here. I mean, my instinct is to somehow give an exchange in order to win the pawn on a6, but I can't actually win it even if I give the exchange. So, so let me move and let me just come back with the queen. And then the a pawn should eventually drop off. Mm. Okay, not, uh, not a bad game at all. Uh, I think uh, turning point definitely when the knight moved from d3. Until then, uh, white was doing quite uh, quite well. Mm. Thank you, Sispal. Okay, let's play. Now what happened? Ah. I will play with white. Excellent. Let's play e4. And now I play with a fellow Swede. Kent Levgen. Not so easy for non-Swedish people to pronounce. Mm. Love is domain. Any new chess courses? Well, I think so, yeah. Uh, I am actually uh, having, uh, I'm working on some projects. It's a little bit too early to say, but uh, you can definitely expect some content from me in early spring. That much I can promise. Exactly in what shape, we will see. Mm. D6. Okay, D6 is a little bit passive here. Mm. But now I'm a bit confused because usually you play bishop e7 before you play d6. And I think I think the reason is this move because now f7 is simply hanging. Uh, yeah, and this probably the best move, but it does lose a pawn. I think I'm doing quite well now. Uh, or I'm actually I'm quite uh, quite confident I'm doing well, to be honest. Uh, the last one uh, move is a little bit of a trick. Uh, because he cannot take the knight. Okay, knight takes e4, but that might... I mean, it's sort of uh, losing the queen, so... It's tough. It's tough chess openings. It's very easy to go wrong very quickly. Mm. Especially in blitz. That's why I think for uh, uh, slightly less experienced players, in general, I would... Uh, like the, I think the the general recommendation actually, not only me, but it is to play uh, like at least with ten minutes each to get uh, get into the games a bit more. Of course, in uh, uh, in a banter blitz, it's not quite <laughs> quite possible. So uh, that's why we are playing three zero. But for those of you who are looking to uh, to improve and are relatively new to the game, I definitely recommend uh, at least ten minutes each. Let's see, knight d4 is the point. Let me go and just stop it and push d4. Mm. This is actually a good move to uh, to stop queen f5, but I will be able to go to g4 instead, I believe. So let's give this check. Now bishop g5. Mm. 
play bullet and blitz for fun and play rapid and classical to improve. Yeah. Uh, we are having a little bit of a discussion actually at home currently, because as I mentioned, my girlfriend who is around 2100 is uh, also going to play in the uh, rapid and blitz. And we discussed what is the best way to practice for that tournament or to warm up. And she is saying that she wants to play a lot of bullet to increase her speed. Uh, and I think in, in general, it's uh, as warm-up specifically for Rapid and Blitz. Maybe not so bad, but I would still say that uh, regular Blitz is a bit more uh, more to the point. Mm. Okay, thank you, Kent. Thank you for the game. Now I will try to see who else is there. Uh, let's play this sort of, uh, as we say, Civil, uh, civil time control, three plus two, getting a bit, a bit slower. Three plus two online feels very slow, but over the board, we, we always play three plus two in the Blitz tournaments. Uh, so I guess it's good practice. Mm. Let's see, knight f3. This is a very topical uh, system, actually. It looks quite innocent for white, uh, but it has gotten very popular lately. And you play this move e3, it looks very timid, but the point is that we we delay uh, central action and we keep a little bit more flexible, uh, a bit more flexibility. And that means that it's harder for black to sort of equalize by force because when you equalize by force, you typically do it by, uh, for instance, making a lot of trades in the center and initiating some forcing action. But when we are not really, you know, putting anything in the center, then it's harder for black to uh, uh, to get those trades in. So it's a little bit abstract, the concept, but uh, basically less, uh, less forcing op uh, openings have gotten much more popular for the reason that, uh, uh, that it's harder to equalized by force against them. Here, oh, but of course, there is nowadays also theory in the, let's say, less theoretical opponent, openings. Uh, so, okay, let's see. So the point is always in these positions, what happens if black plays d4? That is the key question one must always ask. And here, my intention at least is to meet it with the move knight a4. Uh, which I think wins the pawn on d4 because black's bishop is hanging. But if you miscalculate, then suddenly black can get a, a dangerous initiative. Um, yeah, let's see. Queen d6, that's on the one hand a very normal move, but on the other hand, Slightly, slightly strange. Uh, it protects the bishop, prepares d4, but the queen is also slightly vulnerable. Like I will have maybe knight b5. Most probably, it will have to move again. And also, maybe the bishop one day wants to go to d6. So it's, it's definitely not a bad move, but I would be surprised if it's the most accurate one. Uh, can I play? Sometimes they play this weird move knight h4 in these positions. The point is to win the square on f5. Mm. Knight a4 is possible, bishop a7, I can win a pawn. But usually the bishop pair gives black excellent compensation for, for that pawn. So I can also make a non committal move just waiting, but uh, I'm not too impressed by that. Let's see. Okay, let's, let's make this move knight h4. So I'm hoping black will take on e2 because then I will recapture with the knight and open up for my bishop. Uh, but I think the better move is to retreat to e6. After which, to be honest, I'm not so sure what my uh, what my knight is doing on h4. But okay, he they take on on e2. Now I think I'm slightly better because now the knights are coming. The bishop is strong on b2. Mm. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Okay, knight f5 makes sense at first. And here we have to calculate. Always unpleasant in blitz, but the reason we have to calculate is that 
Knight takes g7 is incredibly tempting. King takes knight f4, we attack the queen. If the queen moves, then knight h5 will utilize this pin by the bishop. Uh, and just win the knight on f6, right? I think that's... Uh, uh, that's working for... And if we simply win the pawn on g7, then, uh, I mean, it's one of the most important pawns for black. So most probably we also win the game then. Or I also win the game. Tales of Bionic. How would I describe my current development? One, two years back. Uh, and what I will be working on. Uh, it's very hard to say because the last two years have been uh, during the pandemic. So it has been a very strange and, uh, and specific situation. Uh, I actually started to, after a very... A rather long uh, long period with quite good results. I started to play quite badly just before the pandemic started. Uh, so there in like March, let's say early March 2020, I was super motivated and worked quite hard to get back into uh, to shape. Uh, only to not have <laughs> not have any tournaments for like uh, half a year. Uh, so it was a bit of an, an off period. But now, uh, finally, I feel that I'm playing a little bit uh, better again. I had a terrible, uh, terrible spring, especially the European individual championship was very bad for me. Uh, but in the autumn so far, my last couple of tournaments have been very recent. What am I doing? The knight on h5 is simply hanging. Uh, so I will continue to do what uh, what I'm doing, basically. Okay, I have this, queen c2 and take on c5, but this was definitely not the intention. Uh, <laughs> I should not have... Uh, uh, I've given my knight away like that. But I still feel uh, I'm still doing very well, but this time purely out of luck. Yeah, this is a smart idea to get counterplay on g2, but unfortunately the rook is, is hanging on, on f8. Uh, mm -hmm. But by now, sort of everything should win. Because I'm a rook up and I can just defend with rook f2 if I need to. So. Uh, yeah, also the big difference during the pandemic, to get back to the last question, uh, is that uh, there has been a big increase in focus on Rapid and Blitz, both over the board and, and online. So nowadays I'm playing considerably more, more Blitz uh, online than, uh, than I used to do, let's say, three years ago. I mean, for good and bad, but that's simply how, how life is as a professional these days. Yeah, this is now... I mean, normally I would be slightly afraid to get flagged, but with two seconds increment, uh, that basically doesn't happen. So, yeah, I'm pretty pretty confident to be to win with the Rook Cup. Mm. Okay, thank you for the game. I mean, it was fairly, fairly balanced until this knight takes g7 which is always something to look out for in these positions. Let's play let's play an American. Good morning US. Aslan. Let's play d4. Mm. And no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not actually going to the world uh, rapid and blitz. It's simply a little bit too uh, too far away in uh, in Kazakhstan. Also, Christmas and New Year's are kind of the big holidays uh, where I live. So uh, the tournament being held in Kazakhstan means that I would actually miss both. Whereas if it was in in Europe, I would be in time for for both because of uh, less travel distance. So uh, I mean, it's not. It wouldn't have been, let's say, unimaginable to play, but I decided not to play. Um, is Aslan here? Let's give him a little bit of time. Hopefully Twitch doesn't decide where the money goes in chess. Interesting comment. Well, in regards to the FISHA World Championship, 
I have to say that uh, I thought it was uh, great fun to watch, despite not being uh, classical chess. And I would even have preferred if they had longer time to think. Because I think Magnus has a point, because he's saying that in classical chess, where there is so much theory, uh, like you don't actually need that much time because the more time you have, the more draw you should get and the more you can prepare. Whereas in Fisher Random, everything is new and then actually it makes sense to uh, have a lot of time to think. So I, in general, it was, I mean, I don't want Fisher Random to be played all the time everywhere, but uh, once a year or a couple of times a year, I thought it was actually quite a nice uh, event. Okay, Aslan does not seem to be here. So I will uh, I will abort this game. Let's play with uh, Stonox. How do I pronounce this? My Spanish pronunciation is uh, is pretty terrible. Uh, yeah, exactly, Steven. Uh, I agree with you. Yeah, the the players need some extra time to uh, to get their head their their heads around the positions in Fisher Random for Chess Nine Sixty. Mm, did I manage to pick another guy who is not here? It seems to be a great skill of mine. Uh, ah no, he's he might he might be coming back. He just turned green. Mm, is he? This. Over time, Fisher Random could become more theorized. I mean, that's the whole point of the game, that it's there are so many... Uh, okay, he seems to not be here. There are so many positions that even if there are... I mean, some theory in some positions exists, then, I mean, you will simply not be able to either analyze it all or also just uh, uh, remember it is impossible. So I don't think actually it will ever become theorized in the sense that normal chess has. Mm. Let's see. Let's play this move G4. Move invented by Mamajarov in the last Vikansé tournament. And I'm uh, I'm a big fan of his reply in the, uh, in, at the closing ceremony of the event. Uh, he was asked how he could dare to play such a move. And his reply was that... Uh, it was actually the only game in which he was not worse out of the opening <laughs> with white. So he simply needs to play aggressive chess. Uh, uh, also simply to get good positions. Because with passive play or with normal play, the opponents are too well prepared. That was, I thought, fantastic. Mm. So I'm sacri I have sacrificed a pawn, but I have excellent uh, play. Like I have the center. This queen g4 is somewhat unpleasant towards the g7 pawn. And I definitely think by now that I have full compensation also, let's say, in uh, objective terms. Mm. H5 is a little bit risky because it, it does weaken a lot of the dark squares. Now, like, bishop g5 will become uh, rather scary for, for black, I feel. Uh, I think that the dark squares in black's position is they are they are a bit too weak here, but let's see. Bishop g5. Should I cast a long actually? I was thinking that that no I mean it's very rare that long castle is a good move in such an open position in front of the king, but uh it's also a rather modern way of doing it. I think not yet. I can delay for one move, but it's probably quite interesting later on. Uh, first, I will try to just make something happen on the king side. Mm. I don't think I actually need to take... I want to play something like bishop f6 and queen takes h5. Can I... Well, I can also take on h5 immediately, actually with the point that I have a discovered check, but uh, it does not look winning. Or is it? Okay, it's very, at least it looks interesting. Let's try it. Queen sacrifices, you must always do. 
Mm. When you get the possibility. If I'm following Tata Steel India, I have to say I'm not, I haven't followed it that much so far. I was more focused on following the Mr. Dodgy Invitational, to be honest. Uh, but seems like the young Indians are doing very well. Yeah? Maybe there is some jet lag issues, especially for, uh, for Nakamura. Mm, but I'm not, uh, I cannot make any, any smart comments uh, of that tournament yet. So G takes H5, Bishop takes E7 was my point. See now, Bishop F6, and because of the pin, it looks like it's mate. Mm, but I think definitely white to black should have accepted my queen sacrifice because then the attack would fizzle out and we would get some kind of strange ending. Whereas now it looks like it's just mate on the next move. Mm -hmm. Axe I don't know why the board doesn't open. I have no idea actually. Are you in the uh, uh, in the new play zone? It's a pity if we cannot play. Let me know if you solve it. Mm. Yeah, it looks like he has mate on the next move. Mm. Freddy Patzer is saying that he recently brought my Roy Lopez chessable course and liked it very much. Thank you. I Actually, it was my first course. And when you make your first course, you always put incredible uh, effort because you really want... I mean, I always want to do well, but the first one is special. So uh, without uh, false modesty, I can say that I was... Uh, I was happy with uh, with that course and the quality of it. Now I'm playing against a UK player, an FM called Imperator Sixty. Let's see. Mm, so let's play the Dutch because they have been arch enemies with the British for many hundreds of years. Mm. I'm trying to get some uh, very, let's say, uh, dynamic position. Most probably, objectively, I will be lost later on in this game, but hopefully it will end with me giving mate. <laughs> we, we will see if I manage to predict the future. Mm, let's see, d5, knight d5. I mean, this line is actually really bad for black. Uh, I think the simplest for white is simply to take on e5. Uh, but I quite uh, quite like it in Blitz because you get a lot of attacking uh, possibilities. You take with the pawn, then you push f4, maybe push the g-pawn later on. I mean, it's bad, but it's bad in a sort of fun way at least. <laughs> mm. It should be two. Okay, let's let's push. This time though, after having played f4, I think I will take with the bishop on e5 instead. Not giving up uh, uh, the e4 square completely. And also the bishop is now looking quite strong on the long diagonal, my bishop. Hmm. So. Let's see, knight a4. Now I have uh, the same choice once more, whether I should allow him of them to take on e5. I should take on uh, on b2 myself. Okay, all my instincts are telling me uh, uh, to take on b2, but also all my instincts are telling me that the Dutch is a bad opening. So maybe I should do the opposite of my of my in instincts. Hmm. But if I take, then the knight will get to c5. I have to take, I think. So otherwise, the knight would it would come to c5, and uh, now the knight is a bit stupidly placed on b2, perhaps. Not sure how stupid, but I can pretend at least. I'm not sure that I dislike my position that much anymore, actually, because I have bishop h3, and also I can simply double on the double on the f file. Some rook f5, rook h5 even. Let's see. 
Maybe just when I thought I was fine, I'm, I'm beginning to get seriously worse. Uh, yeah, the, the Dutch is tough. I mean, first of all, I'm trying to give mate. I think white has to play f3, either now or on the next move. And I will try to make some g5 work. OK, so now I have the possibility of playing g5. But I'm really not sure if it's what I'm supposed to do. On the other hand, what else? If I don't do it, then it's really a depressing story. Let's try. King h1 will be played. I will take it, then rook g1. And the king is kind of safe on, in the corner, for the time being, at least. Mm. Yeah, this may be slightly more accurate, because now the pawn on f3 will not be hanging with check, at least. I had no check on g2 first. That's very surprising to me, because I really thought that was the point of white's play. Mm, because now I'm sort of ready to double. Now I'm definitely not worse anymore, or am I? <laughs> I might still be. No, but I have a, I have an excellent attack on the G file. I, even if I'm maybe not better, I'm definitely not worse here. So I will double. Worst case, everything, all, all the major pieces will get traded off. Then maybe my king, if I can trade the queens, my king might enter via F6, E5. But then I have to trade the queens first. Hmm, can I... What is the expression? Can I fish in muddy waters with uh, rook g3? Or will white play queen f2 and I resign? Let me try to take. King takes is a good move, otherwise I would enter. And now I will do so-called flagging operation. Mm, B for a good move. Uh, let's play b6. I have to first remove my king so that I'm not in check. And after that, okay, let's first go here. Because now, e5 oh, was probably not very good. Yeah, this will end with me most probably flagging my poor opponent. Mm, ah, actually not. Now I'm winning the pawn. But the, clearly the game was decided by uh, by time. Yeah. By now, I think I'm actually winning on the board as well. But uh, the ending, of course, was very droish. Uh, but well played. Well played, Imperator 60. Mm. Ooh. I'm now challenged by an international master. Let's try. And let's, for this occasion, play e4. Let's play something else. Back in the days when Blitz was not considered very serious, I like to play this way with uh, uh, with white. Mm, but bishop c5 is something that... Uh, that I'm not too familiar with. Bishop b4 and knight d4 are the two moves that you always face in Blitz. So it's the only two moves I really have any experience with. I remember playing bishop c5 as, uh, as a kid with black. With decent success, but uh, I think it has gotten out of fashion almost entirely. Mm. What other chessable courses I, do I enjoy? And if I think that the players keep secrets from these courses to themselves, uh, well, I, I enjoy a lot of courses. I mean, basically, many of the strong players have have produced excellent courses. Like, I think almost, for instance, all almost all of, uh, of Giri's courses are very nice. Uh, I think Gao and Jones' course on the King's Indian is absolutely fantastic. Uh, what else is there? Mm. Lamy, excellent author, excellent courses, for instance. Chepa's new knight, of course, Cheparino, also uh, 
was studied with uh, with great interest. Um, I mean, many many of the courses are are very good, and I think uh, as for the other question, whether people are keeping secrets, I really think they uh, they don't. I mean, of course, they are not giving uh, exactly what they are intending to pay always, but that's more kind of stylistic uh, choices that maybe they feel that it suits a top player better than uh, than a club player or something like that. But to like let's say deliberately hide some information or hide some important lines. I think people people just don't do because, I mean, uh, other players will be able to tell. And uh, um, yeah, I mean, uh, basically top players are, are quite nice people. So <laughs> they will do it, uh, do it properly. That's at least my opinion. And I would not, not ever kind of think about trying to hide the uh, hide, uh, knowledge my, uh, myself. Like people are buying the course specifically because of your knowledge. So... If you hide it, then I mean the whole uh, foundation of the of the trade disappears. Mm, what did I do now? Did I talk too much? And uh, now I have to give up the bishop pair. The bishop pair is definitely my main advantage here. That's not not acceptable. Mm. But the position is still acceptable because I think it went from being Sort of very nice for me to being so maybe slightly better. But my opponent is an experienced player, it seems, an international master. And he might try to flag me. So I should focus a little bit. Uh, maybe I will try to uh, attack him before. Before my time runs out, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Uh-huh. Uh this is funny. Did he miss maybe bishop c3? Because now it looks like the d6 pawn is hanging. Hmm, also g7 pawn is hanging. It looks like probably I'm just winning now. Mm. Yes, Fiddler. I forgot to mention Fiddler, of course. Fiddler's Grimfeld was fantastic. Yeah, of course. Um, I mean, there are nowadays so many chessable autos that I feel that if I start, I mean... So easy to uh, to forget. So anyone I haven't mentioned, I mean, it's definitely not because it's bad. It's just I'm not remembering them all on on the top of my head. From the top of my head, sorry. What is this? Uh, let's play the Albin counter gambit. And the new uh, the new way to play it is to go knight e7 here. And traditionally, everybody always played d4. I played it never with black in uh, in a real game, but uh, with white actually a couple of times. Somehow quite popular in my youth. Uh, but the new way is is rather interesting. You keep a bit more, uh, let's say, flexibility, and also it, it's kind of a little bit sounder because you. Uh, you don't give up. Uh, uh, you don't give up the hope of winning back the pawn you sacrificed. Mm. Yeah, e four. But I'm not. I mean, e four looks very natural. But I'm not sure because the d four square now becomes mine. I will castle long, maybe take the knight on f3, castle long, and then uh, either win the pawn on e5 back or go knight e4, which looks quite uh, quite scary for white, I think, if I'm not entirely mistaken. Um, maybe knight bd2 to protect against that, but yeah, hard to say. Maybe knight bd2 is still good enough for white. I don't know. I feel like I have decent compensation in this ending. Uh, we will see. I definitely feel that white should play knight bd2 to protect the knight on f3. Um, am I playing Sitka's open? Unfortunately not. I really would have uh, wanted to play, definitely. Uh, but somehow, yeah, it's the same time as the European Rapid and Blitz, which I... Uh, uh, which I promised to play a long time ago, so and which I'm also looking forward to quite a lot. So, 
Uh, had they not been at the same time, uh, I would definitely have played Sitges as, as well. Mm, but yeah, a bit of a pity that they, they clash. Mm, as for the upcoming uh, tournaments, like currently it's a little bit annoying because I don't have any tournament uh, before the European individual, which is in uh, late February, early March. Would have been really nice to have one of these tournaments for instance, in January or February. But there simply aren't that many of them during that period, so nothing to do, I guess. I used to play, I mean, last year, for instance, I played in Baikanze, but it's very hard to get invited there, and I'm certainly not getting invited every year. There used to be a tournament in Gibraltar, very strong open, which I happily played many years, uh, but it exists uh, no longer. So. Yeah, a little bit of a strange uh, season in chess after New Year. Mm. See. If there's a central place GMs go to to find about tournaments. I mean there is some there are some online tournament calendars which you can google but what I have always done is sort of uh, I always went more by hearsay, let's say. Uh, like, I asked friends where are the tournaments, they would reply. Sometimes they would ask me, I would reply. Uh, I wasn't very structured, but but the, I mean, the tournament, strong, very strong opens, it's it's hard to miss because everybody will, will write and talk about them. So mm. It's not so much that I don't find them, it's more that they don't exist, I think. Mm. Yeah, here I think this move b5 was a bit uh, dubious from right because uh, uh, my king side, my queen side is quite a bit more stable now. I have more control over the dark squares. The, for instance, this knight cannot really move anywhere. So yeah, okay. I'm also going to win on time, but uh, I believe my position is by now. Uh, Really nice. Mm, I'm actually even considering to give up the... Uh, I think I will do it. Give up my bishop pair. My bishop pair was very strong. Uh, but also the pawn on a4 is very weak, I feel. So I will do some tactical shenanigans. And now... Yeah, now I pick up the a4 pawn, and with it, the should be a fairly straightforward win. What did I do? Last move was inaccurate, because now white can play rook a1, king b7, and back. Uh, I should have maybe gone to a5 instead, but... Okay, anyway, the time was about to, to go out, so... Mm. Let's see. Let's play against Shadowmate from Canada. Uh, I have never been to Canada. So let's see how they are doing there. This is a, an old line against the French, which is actually not so stupid. Mm -hmm. Knight e2, normally white plays d4 and takes on c5, but knight e2 is a bit, a bit of a different touch. So white clearly intends to play d4. I'm wondering if I can play d4. Currently it would look, I mean, it looks like it's, Hmm, I will do it. I will try it. I have a feeling it's maybe not entirely sound, but... Uh, mm. I mean, my point is if we take and take, I I take on e5, and somehow, no matter what white does, one of the knights will be hanging, I hope. But if they don't, then I'm simply losing a pawn. So let's see. Mm-hmm. 
Thank you, William. That's very nice. <laughs> That's a nice story. Okay, let's see. I think for a proper blitz game, this is way, uh, way too slowly played by both me and, and my opponent here. Like, usually I have noticed the very strong blitz players online, they just make their moves instantly. Uh, I mean, partly because they are thinking uh, very fast, but also because they know that it's better to play fast than to play well. Something that I'm still struggling in a little bit, both understanding and uh, especially accepting. I try to make, I try to play too well in, in Blitz and then, of course, uh, towards the end when I run out of time, uh, it doesn't matter if I'm a piece up or a piece down. So definitely recommend playing a bit faster if you want great results in Blitz. Much faster than I do. Mm. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, simple development. I believe that White's Deep on it's isolated and it looks to me probably a little bit more weak than strong. So I would give black a slight edge here because of the of the spawn structure. I think maybe d4 was better to not get uh, the pawn on, on d3 backwards. Mm. So now it's quite easy to build up some pressure against uh, against the d3 pawn. Still, it's uh, it's not uh, enough uh, enough of an advantage to win the game in itself, but but it's kind of a very pleasant uh, position to play, and especially I think in blitz it's very easy to play such a position with black because you can just make moves, threaten the pawn all the time. White is struggling to uh, to get out. I can't jump at any moment with the knight to d4, but I prefer to, to wait a bit, see what white is doing first, uh, and find a good, a better moment to do it. For instance, now I'm very tempted. Knight d4, queen takes d7, I take, take, I take back. But the problem is that the pawn on a7 is hanging. And this is a bit, um, let's say, not 100% to my liking. So I, I just keep the... Keep the tension. Maybe intending f5. But maybe also just uh, not really doing anything special. Uh, so here, yeah, okay, I double, maybe triple on the d file. I think eventually this pawn will be, uh, will be dropping. Probably white should make some active moves and just sacrifice it. Like to play here b4, for instance. Uh, and if I take three times on d3, then some b5 in the end and try to get something going there. But uh, yeah, it doesn't look like enough. Uh, this one is another another attempt at maybe even keeping the pawn for a while, but it looks, it looks a bit unhealthy, I have to say. Probably... How do I do this? Maybe f5, bishop h4. No, bishop h4 is incredibly weird. Okay, let's try it. I want to play f5 without trading the bishops, but it's it cannot be the, the best move. But let's do it anyway. Mm. Oh, I think I can just take here, right? Can I? Let's do it. G takes h4, I can take the knight. Yeah, now I'm winning some material. Also, I'm getting a little bit low on time, so should show my great pre-moving skills. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the game, Shadow Mate from uh, Canada. Mm, let's see. Newest first. Let's play with Voshislav. My pronunciation is terrible. Uh, maybe we will play again in the European Rapid and Blitz Championship 
in two weeks. Let's try to play some sort of uh, reversed banker gambit, I wanted to say, but now it becomes some reversed Marozzi or something like that instead. Oops, this was actually a mouse slip. I intended 9 f 3 <laughs> but somehow my mouse got hold of the of the pawn. Oops. Luckily, it does not happen too often to me, but still from time to time. And also this time, luckily, it wasn't a blunder. It was just a bad strategic move. Which I'm sure some people have done voluntarily here as well, because people in general are a little bit crazy. Mm. Good evening, chess pawn. What's up? How is how is life? Uh, let's see. I'm not sure how I want to do it. Should we take on f6 or I will take to go with other knight to e4 and try it. I mean, my long term idea is I really want to find Keto, my bishop on b2, but. For that, I need to remove the, the bishop from f6. So this is my uh, my plan. But I was simply not sure what, what the best move order to do it was. But um, Well, I went for this one. Yeah, OK, normal move. But at least I will be able to execute my ID. Maybe now f5 and the bishop back to f6 makes a lot of sense. To, because if I manage to establish my bishop on the long diagonal, uh, I do believe that I will have a quite, quite a promising position. For instance, yeah, maybe some queen g4 or queen h5 could come next. Maybe queen h5 and later f5, maybe knight g5 is possible. Looks fun. Uh, not sure how good, but fun is already quite decent in my world. But let's go here. So f5, my, I will definitely play knight g5, mm, sacrificing this piece because I think uh, the attack will be very strong. Mm. If not f5, then I'm not sure what I will do. Because I think knight g5 is too much before black has committed to f. But is it? Maybe not. But also knight g5, I'm not really threatening anything if I do it immediately. So, hang on. Maybe I should have gone queen g4 instead, provoking f6 and then going queen g6. Queen g4, f6, queen g6. Yeah, now, I mean, that's that's an interesting move because it attacks on a2 and also threatens knight d3, which... Which I don't want. Maybe this one. It gets very weird now, but the queen is sort of out of square. So queen c8 only move. And then maybe knight d6. Can also just go for the attack like g4, g5. Why didn't I think of this before? Let's do it. Knight d3, I will just play g5, whatever. Uh, this is the sort of thing that is impossible to defend in uh, in a blitz game, and probably very difficult to defend in a classical game as well. Mm. What is the most precise way? Probably taking here first, threatening mate. He has to take, and then I take on g7, and then I think black is mated. Yeah, takes takes. Threatening mate. If it takes, I take with the queen. And finally, this typical. Actually, bishop e4 check was made much faster, but uh, but this is good enough. This and this. Too many threats. Mm. Thank you very much, Voshislav. 
Thank you for the game. Let's see if I can uh, find some some new opponents. Let's play with uh, German crypto. If he's there, I'm trying to uh, to find people who are actually there, but not always so easy. I did play the Dutch in the last game, but now I will maybe try something very similar, but sort of improved version. I go here and my idea is to call f5 next move. And I will have a Dutch, but I will have my pawn already on e5. Usually you have to fight a bit with black to get the pawn there. So um, I'm, I mean, I technically, I think this is more known to, to us as a reversed uh, Sicilian. Reversed close Sicilian. But to me, currently, I consider it more of an improved Dutch. So yeah, I mean, it's I'm playing pretty pretty simplistic things. Like, I just want f4, bishop h3, and then go for mate. Again, in classical chess, not sure it would work that well, but in blitz, very hard to defend. Yeah, this makes sense, but on the other hand, it's, it's quite a big concession. Uh, from a strategic point of view, because it gets very hard for white now to open up uh, the queen side. Like there is no break with c5. And okay, the pawn on c7 is weak, but if I just put my bishop on d8, uh, white is very, very far from uh, actually uh, being able to break through. Yeah, e4 makes some sense. Uh, first, I thought very risky, but when thinking a little bit more, it actually it doesn't look so easy for me. Like, yeah, knight f6, uh, very natural, but knight h4 is a bit annoying. h4, I think, is probably a bit too much because now, uh, first of all, the bishop on g4 will be quite strong. And also, I mean, the pawn on e4. I'm looking at the pawn on e4. Is it just hanging? Bishop g4 is also very tempting. I mean, it almost, almost wins material immediately. Hmm, okay, let's... Okay, I will take and see what happens. So my, my idea is to go bishop g4 next. Bishop g4 immediately, queen d3, then take on e4, also possible. Very hard to say uh, which one is better. Yeah, knight takes e5, that's actually the move I expected. Uh, but I, I was trying to calculate this line, queen takes d1 and then knight c3. And to me, it looked like this guy is hanging, this guy is hanging. And if the rook moves, I have this check and take the bishop on c1. Um. So as far as I can tell, I'm actually winning a piece here. Mm. If I'm not miscalculating anything. Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, oh, my opponent actually Resigns, not continuing in the fight. Okay, why not? It was kind of, uh, let's say, in in a game with longer time, losing a piece would be would be game over. But uh, in blitz, people tend to play on. Let's play another player from Poland. Is it Poland? Yes. Ah, uh, 3 plus 2. Ah, we are playing 3 plus 2. I didn't notice. Doesn't matter. Uh, I'm looking at ways to make... Probably g4 works. As a kid, I was... Uh, always very tempted by these g4 IDs against all sorts of Dutch. 
as an adult, I have to accept that it's not usually as good as I thought it was would be, but uh, it would surprise me at least if I'm worse here with white. I get, maybe if I'm allowed to play e5, I should be doing quite well, actually. And even if black plays something like d6, mm, I do have a center at the center, and uh, I probably can pick this pawn up later on, or maybe even just open up with h3. The reason I didn't play h3 on the last move was not because of takes, but because of g3. And it gets quite weird, and this structure with f takes g3 is not... Not so nice. It was definitely possible. Uh, but that was my general line of thought. How much rating I had as 15-year-old? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. I think I became an international master just before I turned 15. So I guess around 2400. But at that age, it was going uh, a bit up and down or quite a lot up and down, to be honest. So, yeah, hard to say exactly how much it was. Now, black is intending bishop b7. Uh, and I thought I would play d5 as a reply. So if the knight moves from f6, I will be able to capture on g4 and have an overwhelming position. But... Um, the question is whether black can do something uh, let's say very concrete. Try to stop my idea, but I don't see it. I mean, I'm thinking about like e takes d5, e takes f6, d4, some sort of weird uh, shenanigans like that. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't really see how it works because d4. Uh, well, first of all, I can maybe take on g7, but also just knight d5, d4, knight d5, and I'm blocking the diagonal. Uh, this one I did not uh, actually uh, consider, to be honest. But it, it looks like something is a bit wrong for black. Maybe this one. Just take. Not sure it's the best way, but I mean, d5, I want to take the pawn on g4. I'm, I'm a piece up, uh, after all. We should not forget that if d4, then my bishop gets active, so... That's probably not uh, not an option for black. Let's see. Queen takes f6, but I'm kind of just a piece up now, I feel. I don't really see the compensation. Like rocking the long diagonal, knight g2. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see it. I think it's just also it's two pawns, which you might argue is almost enough. But once the pieces get active, I think why? Uh, I mean, uh, it will simply be a bit too much for for black. Bishop c five is a good move though, which I s sort of didn't. Uh, didn't really see, but maybe this one to take on d5 with check. I could have played knight f3 and slowly, but rook e8 check would come and I'm trying to prevent uh, the rook from getting active. Very important that king g7 is met by bishop h6 checkmate. Mm. Yeah, but now I think I'm in time to defend everything. Uh, I mean, I can actually, can I even, then queen takes f2, rook d8, it becomes quite, uh, quite messy, but, uh, actually, what should I play here? Probably knight e4 makes sense. Defending and attacking at the same time, usually a good idea. So if rook e8, I just want to play knight, uh, knight e2, rook e8, knight e2. Okay, he can take, we'll get the check on f2, but. Uh, it's only one check, so should not really be too bothersome. The king will be able to escape here. Mm. 
it's still definitely the best try for black because otherwise it's just resignable but uh, I mean the, another problem is that the rook is hanging immediately on the on a, so probably something like knight c6 exactly knight c6 has to be tried uh, and what happens now hmm can I take the knight? Knight take, rook d8, bishop d2. And my point is that I'm threatening queen takes c7. Okay, now I might get mated, which would be a bit uh, unprofessional, but uh, I can't see it, so so let's go for it. Mm. So the big point is like bishop e3 or bishop e4, I can take on c7, we check, and I win the rook. And after that, yeah, now I actually win the rook with check even, but even without check, it's uh, once I win the rook, there is no real counterplay. So, mm. okay, thank you for the game. Uh, got a bit uh, stressful for a while, despite uh, me thinking uh, it was comp it was over. So let's see if uh, people are. Uh, let's play. A Spanish player. Yeah, rook takes rook d2 was the best try, I thought, but I couldn't quite see how it uh, how it worked. I thought I was running away with the king, but... Uh, no, I mean, definitely possible that I missed something. Okay, let's go. Give the bishop some square if in case of uh, knight a4. Usually this pin is not so effective when, uh, when black can still play the knight b2 d7. It's much more effective if the knight is already committed to, uh, to c6. Uh, and now I'm a little bit tempted to start pushing. It's again, probably not the most professional thing to do, but... It's certainly a very tempting thing to do. Mm. Okay, let me at first play c6, maybe some queen b6, and then later g5. <clears throat> b4. B4 is interesting. The thing to play, but the problem is that the pawn on a3 is hanging. My opponent is actually playing very fast. How do I do this? Yeah, I sort of ended up with a weird Philidor, but I think actually uh, it's a pretty decent Philidor. Uh, because first of all, white played d3, so if d4 later, then uh, I will have gained one move. And also it's sort of quite uh, quite harmonious. Actually, it, like generally speaking, it's a little bit strange, but generally speaking, when you end up in a filler type position, but from another opening, usually you have a pretty good version. Uh, it's a little bit like, uh, for instance, the dragon. Like we are generally quite happy to get a dragon style position from another opening. It's just if you play it from the dragon move order, then uh, usually it, it's quite risky, or there are some concrete issues. A little bit the same with filler. That filler positions are not themselves very uh, uh, very bad at all but just if you play it through the normal move order white has some quite uh, quite annoying attempts but if you gain a move or two then it's very playable so what am i doing i cannot move the knight i can of course can i castle okay, let me try to castle i have played g5 but i think my king is we uh, safe enough no or at least not that many uh, attackers. Mm, I don't want to play e4 because I don't want to allow the knight coming to f5 later on. I will do something else. Also, I don't want to trade these bishops, but now, well, I did it anyway. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I'm also running a little bit low on, uh, on time. 
So I should be a little bit careful because we are playing without Ingram. This is a nice change for me though, because now this pawn on f5 means that there will not be a knight on f5 later on. So I feel much, much safer now. Now I'm I'm convinced that my position is great. Uh, a small fork. But I was anyway two pawn. Oh, this is both good and bad. Like now white won back one of the pawns, but on the other hand traded queens with quite a big material deficit. So hopefully my technique will be will be good enough or my my speed as well. King G7. Hang on, what what uh, what is this? Some knight f6 check. Bishop c3 maybe is better. Actually, I'm very slow. I have 25 seconds. It's not clear at all whether I will be in time. But I think the most important thing is to get rid of one of the knights. Just trade it for a bishop. And then it will be much easier. As long as there are two knights, you have to be a bit careful. But now it's uh, smooth sailing, I hope. Yeah, especially with this possibility of pre-moving. It's pretty uh, pretty straightforward, this. No! No! Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I managed to give stalemate. <laughs> A very, very unusual kind of stalemate as well. <laughs> Almost all my pieces are involved, actually. Only these two pawns. But the other five pieces are involved in this stalemate. That's incredible. Uh, yeah. And that's why you should not pre-move when you are completely winning. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that was actually quite fun. <laughs> that's a position to remember. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes. Let's play with Charles IV. Quickly get past that game. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. Also, I mean, for those of you who come in a bit later, I mean, I will definitely not hide the fact that I actually lost the first game. I simply ran into a mate suddenly in uh, in a complicated middle game. So it's not like I'm on uh, on a hundred percent. I will not uh, pretend that. Mm. Let's see this. Eric Rosen is the master of getting stalemates. Yeah, I've seen some. Uh, I don't know if it was it was him specifically, but there are some sort of modern, let's say, stalemate traps based on how the opponent is going to pre-move and so on. Uh, I haven't really studied them uh, at all. I'm not uh, much into these details of how to play online chess in the online sense. When I play online chess or online bits, even bullet, I play it as if I was playing normal chess and I see what happens. Uh, so I'm I'm missing out of some of these uh, these tricks, but most often, luckily, it's enough to play good chess to win. Mm, okay, Bishop G five. I think if I'm allowed to play Queen D two and trade the bishops, uh, I should be doing quite fine. Should be doing very well. So h6 is an excellent move by my opponent, Charles. Uh, and I think you have to dare follow up with g5 later on. Uh, it does give me some, some hook to attack. But if black does not, then it becomes very dangerous. Maybe f4, f5, for instance. Or also, the pin, uh, this pin here is quite quite nasty. Mm. 
Let's see. Yeah, probably G5. I mean, also, I don't really see what else. Like E5, very dubious move strategically because it uh, opens up this bishop. Like E5, I will play F4, and the pawn on F7 will be very weak. So, yeah, what, what else can you do? You can make some waiting move like this. Okay, I will play F4, F5. So, yeah, G5, I, I completely agree with this decision. Ah, D5 as a follow up. I did not expect this, but. Uh, interesting for sure. I mean, e5 is my instinct, but then maybe knight f5 becomes a bit blurry. Also, I can let black take. Okay, let's try. Mm. Yeah, trying to open up in front of Black's king. And also, in general, try to activate this bishop by eliminating Black's pawns. Mm. If I'm watching any chess streams, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Especially, I like to watch commentary of serious tournaments. I think especially the, the Chess24 team of commentators is excellent. I'm learning a lot when I listen to the, the Peters, for instance, the various Peters. Mm. Also, Laurent is doing a very nice commentary. Uh, so definitely learn a lot from that and then enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, like typical normal streams, uh, for instance, let's say something like Nakamura, I'm watching quite rarely, like from time to time, but uh, but not that much. Not like, let's say, people playing Blitz online. Uh, then I would actually just rather play myself. Mm, but it does happen. Sometimes I try to keep up a little bit with the chess world. Not so often, but it happens. Um, okay, let's see. 96 is a good move as well. Trying to establish control over the e5 square, like f5, knight e5. But maybe the pawn on d4 will then be hanging. A knight e5, if I take, then some knight c4 actually is very strong. Bishop takes and black can take with check, followed by taking uh, back on c4. So I'm actually losing a piece if I take on d4, which uh, which is shocking because that was my idea. Uh, but I don't have to take, of course. I can make some other move next. Should still be okay. But definitely this was my idea. But now, yeah. Knight c4 simply seems to, to work for black, so... My opponent is getting dangerously low on time, which I think will become an important factor. By the way, this will probably be my last game because it's the session is uh, session is supposed to be until uh, nine thirty my time, and it's nine thirty one. So I'm not sure exactly what Chess Twenty Four has planned after, but sometimes they have things. So. A couple of minutes here and there is fine, but not to drag too much. Uh, yeah, a knight e3 is coming, so I guess I should take. Uh, yeah, I mean, if black goes to the ending, that can take twice. Maybe I'll, I wanted to say objectively it's the best move, but it's a really sad ending, so... Mm -hmm. No, this is a, what I'm going to This is, of course, the way that black should play. Now the bishop is quite strong. My knight is strong, that is true, but it's the only good thing I have. Uh, let's go here. If I can trade the other bishop, I'm I'm happy, but will I be able to? This is an excellent move, as otherwise bishop e5 would be strong. What can I do here? Let's just, uh, when you don't know what to do in Blitz, it's usually a very good idea to improve your king. So I'm giving the king a square. And we will see whether I get any use of it later on or not. Mm. Should I set up some kind of tactical tricks? Like bishop f2, try to hint at some uh, discovered attack. 
Yeah, sacking the exchange, I'm told in chat. But here, I'm not sure. F6 takes. Maybe there could be some sacrifice. Let's do this first. Actually, I'm just getting outplayed in this part of the game. Uh, yeah, this is not great. I'm hoping black takes because then there will be no bishop d3. Of course, black does not. Okay, but now this f6 ID becomes relevant. Okay, I have five seconds, so probably should make a move. Yeah, now what I'm doing is not uh, impressive at all, say the least. But at least one nice thing that I have this move h3. Okay, now black has this move queen e1, which I completely missed. Oof, oof. Aye, 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 what a finish. And that was another pre move that was not great. What did I do? How did I manage to? Did I manage to do man, this one? Let's see. Finally, I managed to trick him, but I was uh, I was doing very poorly there. Ah, he continues to fight. Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was not very impressive by me. And that one should have been one a bit cleaner. Because at some point I was getting outplayed, but then actually I got complete control until I blundered my bishop with bishop e5. Uh, I mean, any move like, I don't know, knight e6, for instance, should be, or queen g6 first and then knight e6 should, should be completely winning. So, actually, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, well, luckily, time got a bit too low for my opponent, so... I win to finish. I guess thank you very much uh, for uh, for tuning in. I will actually do one more Banto Blitz next week. I think it's uh, Friday next week. So it will be my last uh, Banto Blitz before the, uh, the the European Rapid and Blitz. So uh, hopefully hopefully see you there. And I mean, thanks for the games. Well played, everybody, and, uh, and so on. And yeah, take care. Enjoy 12 days of chess heaven at the Chessable San Luis Sieges International Chess Festival. Escape to the sun this December and take part in the spectacular Chessable Sunway Chess Festival situated in Sieges, near Barcelona. Play alongside top GMs including Ivanchuk, Esipenko, Adiban and more. 10 round open tournaments with over 27,000 euros in prizes. Chess lectures from GMs most days, beer tasting plus sushi, pizza, paella and cocktail masterclasses, World Cup watch parties, table tennis, table football and blitz chess tournaments. Even better, Chessable Pro members play for free. You can find out more by going to Sunway Sieges website, visit chessable.com slash sunway.